Today I'd like to talk about the, uh, the concept of a uh, Voronoi noise and how it's manifested in different sorts of modeling situations. Uh, so Voronoi is uh, just a, a type of, of noise, but basically it just means these sort of six-sided or circular shapes sort of jammed together however they can fit. So uh, I'm going to show you some examples from, uh, from nature and some uh, industrial design, and then we'll uh, take some approaches on making our own. Uh, so here you go, this is a radiolaris, and this, these things are pretty small. This is seen in a microscope or something. They're like a, basically a form of coral, but you see they've got these cool skeletons. They come in all sorts of different different shapes. Now let's just check it out a little closer. They come in all different sorts of shapes. And sometimes these are even used as like pumice. And here we go. This is a, a cross section of a bird's bone. And you can see it also has this lattice structure to give it strength while also keeping it light. And uh, here's some more uh, uh, illustrations of radiolari. Uh, there's some, um, before the advent of photography, there were some really nice illustrations done of these uh, microscopic creatures. And here you go, there's some nice photography of a, in a bone structure. Looks like from a scapula or something. And here we go. Now this is uh, kind of getting into more of the applications that we'll be using it for. It's particularly good for uh, building things for 3D printing because uh, it's, it's strong, it looks cool, and uh, uses a minimum of material. And here we go. Now this is a, a nice use of it in industrial design. See, it's, uh, it has all the spaces it needs for all the ports and buttons and switches, and yeah, it has a cool sort of spider webby bone design. And here we go, this is a pretty nice looking chair here. And you can see just to model this would be pretty simple this, in terms of, uh, you know, 3D, it's just this bent, plane. And now we're getting into uh, some of the more practical uses of it for something like a cast where this can be made from a semi-flexible material so this could just be stretched on rather than you know having to be laid around like plaster or something. And of course has some nice um, artistic applications and certainly that's a major part of it. And here we go some more uh, medical applications printed in uh, some kind of plastic. And now, people have really gone crazy with it in some sci-fi films. A really nice way to make an android um, armature. Here we go, this is a Dolores from Westworld. They only show this stuff in a couple shots, but it's, it's pretty impressive on, on film. Looks really nice. So it's a hard armature on the outside with all the, uh, the guts on the inside. Kind of uh, an endoskeleton rather than, or, or rather an exoskeleton rather than an endoskeleton. So it's more like an insect than a mammal. And now, I, I just watched this movie the other night with my kids, and I, I really love some of the, uh, the design work. This is Guardians of the Galaxy 2. These are actually some of the, uh, the concept drawings. Really nice. Seeing these weird little plants all over the place. Like, like here we go. I actually took this as a, um, a screen grab from the film. And I just love these weird little plants here, these, these little things here. And this is exactly the... Uh, the, the sort of thing we're going to put together uh, today. All right, so now let's uh, let's go about it in probably the easiest way. So I'm going to go ahead and make a platonic, and we are going to switch this to a Bucky Bucky Ball, Buckman's Buckminster Fuller. All right, and we'll hit C to turn this into mesh. And you see, as it is, we've got these, you know, normally these other types, yeah, they're made of either three or four sided uh, uh, facets, whereas here, it's all made of these six and five sided uh, facets. See, like now, if we turn on uh, display lines, we've got a, a couple of uh, lines going through these flat surfaces. So now the first thing we want to do is we want to make sure we're selecting all of these lines here, but not these middle ones. So I'm just going to hit select all, and then we'll uh, we'll start deselecting the ones we don't want. So let's uh, make sure we've got that. And I'm just hitting control to deselect these ones in the middle. And make sure you're deselecting the correct ones. And I'll move our vantage a little bit. And there 
there's no shortcut here. You're just going to go through and just deselect them. You could probably mess around with loop, loop selection or something like that, but you would probably spend about the same amount of time. Yeah, we'll just make sure we've got everything. And once we've got everything, we'll uh, look at it in uh, different display mode, a transparent like line mode or something. That way it's a little easier to, uh, to see what's going on. All right, I think we may have all of them. Let's check out a different display type. And it is looking good, like a little soccer ball or football for everyone in the rest of the world. All right, that is looking just what we want. Let's go back to our regular display type. And I'm going to use a bevel and just a little bit. Right, like that and notice I have no subdivision on and I have this set to fixed distance and uh, that is just what I want now let's go into uh, polygon mode and you see it's um, selected everything but what we've just created with the uh, uh, with the bevel tool so now just delete that and then look at what we've got we've got a nice uh, lattice and that is the basis of, uh, of what we're building here and now you see we've got triangles at the corners and just nice uh, just nice square polygons connecting them. All right, so now the first thing, go to simulate cloth, cloth surface, and make this a child of cloth surface. And by default, this adds a single subdivision. In this case, let's get rid of that subdivision and let's bring this to minus two and now we can see, look at that. We've built the structure already. Now, you know, if you were doing 3D printing, that might be as far as you want you, you would want to take it. You know, maybe if you didn't necessarily want it to be too organic. Now you see if you're getting this sort of uh, faceting here. This has no uh, fong tag. Well, we'll just add a fong tag. There we go. And to the truth, we don't even need an angle limit. All right, but I don't think this is quite uh, uh, enough for what we want to do. Let's also add a uh, subdivision and make that a child of that. And now, it looks like our normals are a little messed up. That is probably what is, uh, what is causing that weird sort of look there. Let's go into our... Uh, one way is we could just have this going straight out but sometimes uh, doing your modeling with this with this uh, in negative can be helpful too but it's easy enough to switch back and forth now look at this cool thing we got looks just like the um, the radial laris that we looked at from the, uh, the electron um, uh, photography and we can always go back in add a little bit of thickness if we want. And let's check out uh, what kind of mesh we've got. And we can always add a little bit more subdivision if we want. And now let's uh, let's show some kind of flexible workflows we can do with this. Let's uh, add a cloner. And I'm actually going to add the uh, way down here. I'm going to do it like that. Go to the cloner, have them all in the same place. And now I'm going to add a step effector. And let's switch this. Okay, I think we need to switch the parameter to, to big to minus zero. There we go. Like those small. Let's see how many. How many are we making here? Three. Maybe a couple more. Let's 
turn five. Let's get closer. See now, and then we'll uh, we'll kind of turn these a little bit. See, and it's pretty easy to build up a pretty complex uh, material or uh, structure with, uh, you know, once you've got that uh, basic uh, basic shape going on. All right, well, hold on and uh, we'll step it up and start uh, taking our technique and making it a little bit more sophisticated.